Aloha! This is Pipeline Audio with a tutorial on getting started in Reaper using Recomp. In the last video, Recomp Basics, we learned about Recomp's controls. In this video, we're going to see some practical applications. Be aware that these controls are all highly interactive, and a small change in one parameter could have a drastic effect on the others. This is the price of power but it's also the benefit. Choose what you want the compressor to do, then take a strategic approach to the controls to make that happen. For a brick wall limiter, which is to ensure that absolutely no signal passes above a certain level, choose main input as the detector input. Set a tiny bit of pre-comp, attack to zero, ratio 100 to one, and the RMS size to zero. Play with the release to get a low, unobtrusive value, but long enough to avoid distortion caused by riding the actual waveform of the signal. For a still firm but more musical limiter, start putting in higher than zero knee values and try a small amount of RMS size. For a technical compressor, choose main input set around 4 to 8 to 1 ratio, pre-comp and attack to zero, and release as low as possible without distorting. Set the knee to zero and the RMS to zero as a peak compressor or around 10 milliseconds for a little smoother operation. Take special note that these controls are extremely accurate in their settings, perhaps too honest. Even for a technical compressor, or especially for the type of channel compressor you will find in a three-letter style mixing console, you'll likely want to set the knee and RMS sizes to something greater than zero, in order to have a little bit of wiggle room with the settings. Doing a typical bass guitar hard limiting setting, for instance, a 6 to 1 ratio, 5 milliseconds attack, seems to work well with a moderately slow 50 milliseconds RMS window and a 3 dB knee size. Even 3 dB for a knee can still seem quite hard and in control without getting overly fussy pumping and breathing. Now, when it comes to character type compressors, a lot of thought has to be given as to the how and why certain compressors sound the way they do. Recomp is very much the equivalent of a box of capacitors, photoresistors, VCAs, and tubes. As such, you really do have a wide range of possibilities, but you'll have to work a bit to find them. Do a search and find out as much as you can about a specific compressor you'd like to emulate. Try and find their attack and release ranges, their ratio or ratios, their style of feed forward or feedback detection, and their RMS calculation times. Also, critically, look at the detector and find out how it's filtered. Lots of the sound of a compressor comes from the weighting or ignoring of certain frequencies in the detector. One tool you'll find extremely valuable in building a compressor with Recomp is PSP's free Vintage Meter VST plugin at PSPAudioWare.com. Open Vintage Meter in a separate window and watch how it responds to the signal you are dealing with. Switch between PPM and VU settings and see which is more relevant to this particular signal. Left click on the PSP Vintage Meter title at the bottom of the plugin to open its calibration system. Futz around with the VU and PPM integration time knobs until you have a meter which is really telling you a lot about your signal. Copy the PPM or VU time value you see here, depending if PPM or VU is working better for you, and use that as the RMS size in Recomp as an excellent starting point. Often, you'll want to remove very high and very low frequencies from the detector to keep it from triggering on irrelevant audio. The common, often discussed bass loss problems with certain classic compressors can be cured by setting the high pass up into the 80 hertz or higher range. Same thing is true with high frequencies. You'll often not want it triggering on inaudible transients, so set the low pass somewhere reasonable. Using these techniques, you'll be well on your way to capturing some classic compressors while adding a few tricks of your own. Need a de-esser? Click the preview filter output checkbox and move the high and low pass filters around until all you hear is the offending sibilance. Uncheck the preview filter output checkbox, set the ratio around 8 to 1, attack around 15 milliseconds to keep some clarity, then lower the threshold till the sibilance goes away. You'll find other uses for this type of function like de-popping and de-farting bass guitars and yanking unruly cymbals out of tom-tom tracks. For some really advanced tricks, mix in some of the dry output for a parallel or New York compressor type of sound. This is just the tiniest bit of scratching the surface of Recomp's power, but hopefully it'll get you pointed in the right direction. 